Jacques Cousteau's barrier-breaking underwater exploration brought oceanography into the homes of television viewers from the 1960s and 1970s. The documentary films and environmental activism changed the way the government disposed of nuclear waste and other ocean pollutants. The significant history of oceanography begins with philosophers and naturalists when they began to question the ocean's currents and waves. The first philosophers were the Assyrian people. Assyrians were a warrior society where every young man trained so they could fight in the future. There were hundreds of thousands of warriors who were formed in this process. When they conquered a land traveling through a river, Assyrians designed and used goatskin inflatable bladders to float on and breathe out of while underwater. Years afterward, oceanography became a profession for many which influenced them to create underwater breathing devices to explore the oceans. This also influenced the evolution of underwater exploration inventions such as Bushnell's turtle, an early submarine type device, the diving bell, also associated with the sea turtle, and several other underwater diving suits that became later innovations. For instance, just as the Assyrians saw the value of underwater tactics, frogmen became an important part of America's fighting forces during World War II. Frogmen performed amphibious renaissance in the ocean. They had to go to a demolition school where they learned how to use explosives and destroy things. During training, they had to demolish replicas of obstacles seen on Allied Intel photographs, tweaking their methods each time to be more effective. Jules Verne is a French novelist, poet, and playwright and inspired a science fiction book titled 20,000 Leaves Under the Sea. Jules Verne's book influenced Jacques Cousteau to pursue his desire to explore the ocean. Jacques explored underwater shipwrecks and retrieved artifacts. During these dives, he interacted with sea life. Before Cousteau's oceanography career launched, Jacques found a passion for swimming as a young child as a punishment by forcing him to swim. In other words, his punishment became his joy. As France was drawn into World War II, Cousteau would film many military documentaries as a passion. Tragically, into 1933, Cousteau got into a serious car accident, paralyzing his body. Jacques turned his childhood fascination with Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea into his life's work. His desire to share ocean life with a wider audience brought about his barrier-breaking ocean exploration. Who still wanted to protect the environment and the oceans of the world, he explored the world on his famous boat Calypso, a former British minesweeper that had been repurposed to carry out new missions. His boat embarked on many journeys, traveling, swimming underwater, and discovering shipwrecks. Jacques Cousteau co-invented the Aqualung in 1944 alongside with Emile Gagnon. This underwater apparatus helped him stay underwater longer, a barrier that had previously prevented the close study of ocean inhabitory. Along with the Aqualung, Jacques Cousteau invented the Sea Fleet and Diving Saucer, a deep diving shape submersible. These inventions led Cousteau to be successful as an oceanographer. Four great visions about people living in underwater cities. What are your visions uh, now about the uh, relation between man and the oceans? Ah, relation between man and the oceans is very important. But underwater cities are stupid. People are not made to live underwater. But they can work underwater for extended periods if the task is uh, important enough. But otherwise, going down to live is absolutely stupid. We will never do that. After some years, Jack began his own TV show, The Undersea World of Jack Cousteau, featuring oceanography. The show became a fixture on TV and made him famous. During this time, he utilized his filmmaking experience from the Navy to document his journey and sea life he encountered. Cousteau was constantly working on new inventions. His underwater camera, also called Calypso, brought moving images of ocean life onto television screens throughout the world. Along with oceanography, Jacques became an active environmentalist, taking a stand on protecting their environment and its inhabitants. His fame rose to a peak when President John F. Kennedy presented the National Geographic Society's the gold medal. that someday we may swim as well as the fish, or at least deeper. And uh, he is therefore one of the great explorers of an entirely new dimension. And uh, I can uh, imagine his satisfaction in having opened up the uh, ocean floor to uh, man, 
into science. And therefore, I present uh, the National Geographic Society gold medal awarded to Captain Jacques-Yves Cousteau, undersea, undersea pioneer. To earthbound man, he gave the key to the silent world, April 19, 1961, Shortly after Jacques Cousteau retired with an impressive legacy, Jean-Michael Cousteau, the first son of Jacques Cousteau, took his place. According to OceanFutures.org, he is explorer, environmentalist, educator, and film producer for more than four decades. He continued interacting with marine animals, exploring different parts of the world. Oh, octopus. When I was a child, I remember swimming in that environment, and there was a less and less fish and more and more garbage. Today, we're finally coming to the point of the time where we're starting to understand what we're doing to our life support system. No water, no life. Next time you're drinking a glass of water, you're drinking the ocean. Along with Jean Michael Cousteau, many other members of the Cousteau family found a passion for oceanography and environmentalism. The next generation also continued what Jacques Cousteau did, such as Felipe Cousteau Jr., who continues the legacy of his grandfather. would constantly tell me that the key to protecting the oceans, the key to protecting the planet, is educating the next generation. I'm not Cousteau because of my passport or my birth certificate. I am a Cousteau because of how I live my life and the values that I... As Jacques Cousteau's career progresses and his groundbreaking documentary brought greater notoriety, he became so popular he made the cover of Time magazine. Cousteau began to observe the negative impact humane pollution was having on his cinematic subject, the ocean. Over the course of his career, Cousteau made over 100 films. By far, his most influential was the famous TV series, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, which ran from 1968 to 1976. His visionary efforts helped shape specific research and bring the plight of our oceans to the public. Cousteau once said, people protect what they love. How true. One of Cousteau's most profound legacies is that he helped people understand the complexity and beauty of ocean life and our connection to it. In doing this, he helped drive environmentalism into the public consciousness and help change attitude. His public conspicuous reduced commercial whaling by persuading nations to event a moratorium in 1986. Jacques Cousteau's amazing life works are carried on to this day by the Cousteau Society, whose mission is to protect marine life for present and future generations, advocating for a silent world which could advocate for itself. Imagine a world where all the children from 7 to 8, for example, would have to spend a year on the other side of the fence. It would be, from the educational standpoint, of course, a great opening to their minds, but it also would be a formidable barrier against war. Jacques Cousteau was a man of principle who advocated that humans should protect our precious oceans and waterways. His desire to elevate environmental issues explore the ocean depths and bring living wonders on to the lives of his audience created a lasting legacy as a champion for our home planet, the Earth.